Lesson 1.1a, Expressing Rational Numbers as Decimals. So if you look at this fish over here, this is natural numbers. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Notice that it doesn't include 0. Then we have whole numbers. It does include 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Then we have integers. Those are negative and positive whole numbers. So it's going to include all the negatives to the left of 0. It's going to include 0 and all the positive numbers to the right of 0. Then we have rational numbers. Those are fractions and decimals. And we have real numbers. Those are irrational numbers and all the other numbers. They can't be written as a fraction or a decimal that terminates at a certain place value. So if you look, the whole numbers include natural numbers, because we can see the 1, 2, 3 right here. Integers include whole numbers and natural numbers. Rational numbers include integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. And real numbers include all of them and the irrational numbers. A rational number is any number that can be written as a ratio in the form of a over b, where a and b are integers, positive and negative whole numbers, and b is not 0. Some examples would be 5 can be written as 5 over 1 as a fraction, and 25 hundredths can be written as 1 fourth, or it could be written as 25 over 100. It can be written as a fraction. Every rational number can be written as a terminating decimal, such as 0 0.25, 25 hundredths. This has a finite number of digits. It ends at the hundredths place. A repeating decimal has a block, group, of one or more digits that repeats indefinitely. That means forever. We write a bar above the digits that repeat. For 5 twelfths, it's equal to 0 0.416, and the 6 keeps repeating and repeating. So we write a bar over the top of it to show that the 6 is repeating. Using long division to write fractions as a decimal. If we have 1 half, we do 1 divided by 2. 1 divided by 2. And we divide until we get a 0 remainder. 2 can't fit into 1, so that's 0. But 2 can fit into 10. We put a decimal point, and it goes directly up in the quotient. Now we think 2 can fit into 10. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. We do 2 times 5 and subtract and get 0. We know that 1 half is equal to 5 tenths. The fraction bar is a division symbol. Fractions are division equations. And because we have 0 for our remainder, it's a terminating decimal. That's it. That's as far as it goes. Now for 5 twelfths, we do 5 divided by 12. 5 divided by 12. This is the division symbol. 12 can't fit into 5, so we're going to put a 0 here. But if we add a decimal point and a 0, we can think 12 fits into 50. That would be 4 times because 12 times 4 is 48. We subtract and get a 2, and we add another 0. And we keep adding zeros to the right of the decimal point. When we subtract 12 times 1 is 12, we get an 8. Then we drop another 0. 12 fits into 80 six times. That's 12 times 6 is 72. We subtract and get an 8, drop another 0. We get 80 again. And if we do it again and put our 6 up here, we're going to get 80 again. So this 6 is going to continue repeating. We have 0 0.416. When we can continue to add zeros to the dividend, we just keep adding the zeros, continuing to divide, we have a repeating decimal, a non-terminating decimal. It doesn't terminate. It doesn't end. It continues on. Here we have 2 and a fourth. We can turn the entire mixed number into a fraction greater than 1, an improper fraction. We do 2 times 4 plus the 1 numerator. That gives us a 9, and we use the denominator 4. We have 9 fourths. We can do 9 divided by 4. 
9 divided by 4. 4 fits into 9 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract and get a 1. We add a decimal point and a 0, and we drop the 0 down. Now we have 10. Fits into 10 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract and get a 2. Now it's time to drop this 0 down. We added another 0. And 4 fits into 20 5 times. 4 times 5 is 20. When we subtract, we get a 0 remainder. We know 2 and 1 fourth is equal to 2 and 25 hundredths. Now we can set aside the 2 and divide 1 divided by 4. We can just set this 2 aside and not think about it for a second, and then do 1 divided by 4, and we're going to get 0 0.25. Then we can add the 2 to the quotient. We can bring this 2 back and add it to this quotient. 2 plus 25 hundredths is 2 and 25 hundredths. This is a terminating decimal because it ends in the hundredths place. There's no repeating numbers. We divide the numerator by the denominator. The numerator becomes the dividend on the inside, and the denominator becomes the divisor on the outside. 3 eighths, when we do our long division, is equal to 375 thousandths, 0 0.375. And since our remainder is zero, this is a terminating decimal. It ends in the thousands place without any digits repeating. In some repeating decimals, all the digits repeat. In other repeating decimals, one or more digits repeat. For one third, three can't fit into one, so we put a zero here, and we add a decimal point and some zeros to the right side, and think 3 can fit into 10. 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract and get a 1. We can add another 0 and drop it down. Now we have 3 fits into 10 again, and we're going to continue to get 3's in our quotient. So we've got a repeating 3. We can just write 0 0.3 with a bar over the 3 showing that it's repeating. 1 third is equal to 3 tenths with the bar over the top of it. Here we have 11 27ths. We do 11 divided by 27. 11 is on the inside as the dividend. 27 is on the outside as the divisor. And we can add a decimal point and several zeros to the right side of the decimal point to continue dividing. What we find is, since 27 times 4 is 108, and 27 times 7 is 189, we end up with 0 0.407, 407, and this will continue to repeat, 407, 407. We can write it as the 407 with a bar over the top. It's 407 thousandths. We just write a bar over the top to show that these are repeating. These three digits repeat, so this is a repeating decimal. Some fractions may be converted to decimals from memory because they're used so often. One-fourth is 25 hundredths. You can think of this as there's four quarters and a dollar, and that would be one quarter, wouldn't it? One-fourth, one quarter. One-third is 0 0.3 with the bar over the top because that three repeats. One-fifth is 0 0.20, or we could write it as 0 0.2. We don't need that trailing zero, do we? It's two tenths or twenty hundredths. One half is fifty hundredths. We could even say it's five tenths. We don't need that trailing zero. Two thirds, since one third is zero point three that's repeating, two thirds would be zero point six with the six repeating. One tenth, that's easy. That's one tenth. Three fourths would be like three quarters of a dollar. That's seventy five cents. So that would be seventy five hundredths. And when you're really good and your memory is really good and you've done this a lot, you're going to memorize this one. One eighth is equal to 125 thousandths, 0 0.125. That's one eighth. You could very easily find two eighths, three eighths, four eighths by multiplying this by two, three, four, whatever. You could find seven eighths by multiplying 0 0.125 times seven. We're finished with the first part of the lesson. We're going to be moving on to the second part, 1.1b, and we're going to be expressing decimals as rational numbers. 
Make sure you know the difference between real numbers, rational numbers, integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. For eighth grade, you should know these by now. And I hope you have a wonderful day and join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.